Family calls for arrest of white woman who fatally shot black neighbor. Calls are growing for an arrest to be made in Florida after a black mother of four was shot and killed by her white neighbor through the neighbor's door, apparently over a dispute involving the victim's children. Now, the, look at this. The Washington Post apparently has uh, adopted the practice of capitalizing both black and white. I mean, I don't know why we're capitalizing either, but if we are going to capitalize either, it seems to me we ought to be capitalizing both. So at least the Washington Post is doing that. Of course, what are what are proper pronouns, folks? They're, they're things that identify, right? Like our names. So they they they're just when they capitalize race like this, they're, they're characterizing race as a as a key identifying characteristic. It's racist, of course. Uh, continuing with the news story, the neighbor had reportedly thrown roller skates at the children Friday, the day of the shooting, reportedly, after which their mother knocked on the neighbor's door to confront her about harming the children. Wait, now, now it's a confrontation. It's not just knocking to recover an iPad. It was a confrontation. Does that have implications for whether or not this might have been a lawful use of force by the woman inside the home? She's being confronted by an angry person outside her door. Was it just knocking or was it an apparent attempt to enter the home? We don't know, but those are the facts that matter. As we'll see in a moment, we'll look at the Florida law involving defense of highly defensible property. Uh, the neighbor allegedly fired a gun from behind the door, hitting the mother. Uh, officials identified the victim as G.K. Owens, also known as A.J. They said the suspect was a 58-year-old 50 year white woman who, whom they did not identify. Well, she's identified now. It's Susan Lorinx. She's been arrested now. Uh, no charges have been filed in the case, and the county sheriff said his office could not make an arrest in the shooting until authorities determined whether the use of force had been justified under Florida's stand-your-ground law. Meh. First mistake. Um, it's just self-defense law, folks. And Florida law does say that you can't arrest someone who's been involved in a use of force event until you've considered whether or not their use of force might have been lawful self-defense. Because if it appears to be lawful self-defense, that person ought not be arrested. Nobody would want to be arrested because they were attacked and merely defended themselves. Now, in the normal course of events, what Florida used to do, what every state pretty much still does, is the cops show up, you shot someone, they don't really care why you did in the moment, you're just arrested. You're arrested, you're charged, and you can tell it to the judge. And that whole process is unbelievably disruptive to a law-abiding person's life. Now they have an arrest record. Now they're facing criminal charges. Now they have to hire a costly attorney. Even if it turns out it was totally lawful self-defense. So Florida law says before you can arrest someone on a use of force case, you have to make an assessment of whether it appears like it was lawful self-defense. Now, there must have been something that suggested it could have been lawful self-defense because it took several days, almost a week, for the sheriff to arrest the woman. Now, he did an investigation. He did ultimately arrest her, which suggests his investigation indicated to him this did not look like lawful self-defense. But the law does require that investigation to be done. And by the way, is this 58-year-old white woman a flight risk? She's going to run off to a country without an extradition treaty with the U.S.? She's going to go to Russia. They know who she is. They know where she lives. When they want her, they'll just go pick her up. Uh, the law states that a person can use deadly force if they reasonably believe it could prevent imminent death or great bodily harm to himself or herself or another. That's a fair enough description of Florida self-defense law. It doesn't include everything, but it, it hits key elements. Remember, folks, the elements of self-defense, five elements, up to five elements of self-defense. One of them is avoidance. 39 states are stand-your-ground states just like Florida. They don't impose the element of avoidance in an otherwise lawful case of self-defense. The element of avoidance having to do with whether or not you have a legal duty to retreat before you can use deadly force in self-defense. And of course, in this context, the shooter was in her home so she'd be covered not only by Florida's stand-your-ground law, but also by Florida's castle doctrine, which every state has. Even the duty-to-retreat states have a castle doctrine, which similarly relieves you of an otherwise existing legal duty to retreat if 
you're defending yourself against an intruder into your home or someone attempting to intrude into your home. Lawyers representing Owen's family, this is the woman who was shot, said the shooting was unjustified. Well, what do you think they're going to say? And alleged that the shooter had used racist language against Owen's children. You know, folks, we live in an era where it's so easy for some people to just say, well, they used the N-word, and therefore my beating of them, my killing of them was lawful. It's much like uh, women who killed their significant others. Uh, suddenly we discover that, oh, they, she was a lifelong victim of abuse by that guy, that she poured gasoline on and set on fire when he was asleep in bed. Are those claims true? They could be. Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? Racial dynamics were at play. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump. Hey, Ben. Who is representing members of Owen's family said in a statement calling for the alleged shooter's arrest. Some Florida Democrats also called for the woman to be charged Tuesday. Around 9 p.m. Friday, deputies received a call about a possible trespassing at a property in Ocala, Florida. That means it was the shooter calling the police. Right. Because the black woman was at her front door. When the officers arrived, they found a woman suffering from a gunshot wound. They tried to save her, but she later died. The sheriff called it a tragic incident. Fair enough. Stand your ground laws have come under renewed scrutiny in the wake of the shooting of Ralph Yarl, a black teenager who was shot in Kansas City after he rang the wrong doorbell. Is that all he did was ring the wrong doorbell or was he trying to open the screen door of the house? Presenting himself as someone attempting to unlawfully enter a dwelling. And forcibly. In any case, neither this shooting, folks, nor the Yarl shooting have anything to do with Stand Your Ground. So what is Stand Your Ground? We already said Stand Your Ground relieves you of an otherwise existing legal duty to retreat. So a case can be a Stand Your Ground case only if there would have been, under the facts of the case, an existing legal duty to retreat. Right. Because if there's if the facts don't support a legal duty to retreat, then stand your ground has no role. If the facts don't support a legal duty to retreat, there's no legal duty to be relieved by stand your ground. Would there be a legal duty to retreat in this case or the old case on the facts as we know them? No. The shooter's in her home. Now, it doesn't mean she was justified in shooting. She may have violated other of the elements of self-defense. But retreat's not one of them. It wouldn't apply. If Florida were a duty to retreat state, if Florida were Massachusetts or Maryland or, or one of the 11 duty to retreat states, there still would be no legal duty to retreat here because the shooter was inside her home. In, in assuming, of course, the shooting is otherwise lawful. If the shooting's otherwise lawful, then it's still not a stand your ground case because it's just an unlawful killing as the as the sheriff here reported his view of